POC Network here with another unboxing. Today we have something coming from the company Fabaro. And Fabaro is a well-known smart home company uh, with all sorts of products. And we have covered these guys in the past. We absolutely love them. And uh, they have a, a solution for just about everything. And what we're looking at today is flood sensors. And what flood sensors are for are for placing throughout your home in sensitive areas, or at least it, areas that are at high risk for water damage. So we're talking about basements, garages next to your water heater, your bathroom floors, things like that. And what they do is they look for water. And if they do detect water, if there's water leaking all over the floor or wherever you've placed them, they immediately let you know throughout your, you know, using your, your automation system. So they can notify your hub that's controlling everything. They can send out notifications to you via your phone. Or if you have a, any kind of further means in your system, such as a smart valve set up on the water valve coming into your house, this can immediately tell to turn it off and save you from any additional water damage instantly within seconds of water detection, which is pretty cool. Of course, all that stuff's extra, but if you have the network set up, you add this to your network, it can at least warn you so you can come rushing home or call a neighbor or a friend or something and say, hey, could you rush over my house and turn off my water coming into the house because I have a flood issue going on. And uh, this could potentially save you thousands of dollars. So what we have today is uh, we have the Z-Wave version of this as well as the Apple HomeKit version. So two different scenarios for two different people here. We are going to pop these open, see what they look like, see what they come with. And of course, you go to the website at pocnetwork.net where we're going to have a full review about this later on, letting you know what we think. Now, starting with the Z-Wave sensor, the sensor itself is really small. It's less than the size of a hockey puck, fits well in your hand, and uh, it's a real simple design to it. You have three metal prongs here at the bottom. They push in kind of like metal contacts for batteries. And so eh, when it sits on the ground, it automatically is able to start detecting water if water comes across those sensors. There's nothing else much to it other than that. Uh, there is a battery inside and you replace the battery after it goes dead. I, uh, it's gonna last you quite a long time before you have to do that, but these are CR123A batteries. And to get to it, because it's not exactly 100% obvious without reading the instructions, I mean, it's a real simplistic design to this, but what you do is you grab both halves and you just turn, or twist at least, pop it open, and you have your battery right there. And the battery is easy to replace. There is a plastic tab here that you're gonna wanna remove before even initially using the device because that protects the battery from you know, being consumed while it's waiting to be shipped, shipped and sitting on a store shelf or anything like that. Further in the box, you have some instructionals uh, just to walk you through adding this to your Z-Wave network and getting started. It seems to be very, uh, pretty informative, but yet kind of short and straight to the point. Now uh, you have multiple different languages, so everybody's covered. So that is the Z-Wave version of the water sensor. Let's take a look at the one for Apple HomeKit. Now the Apple HomeKit one is a little bit bigger in size, is a little bit more involved, mostly just packaging, anything else. But uh, there's something that's extra, or a little bonus to this, is the HomeKit version is more than just the flood sensor. It is actually a temperature sensor on top of that. So you have two sensor controls here uh, for all your scenes on your network that you can play with. You have some documentation here, uh, a little bit more involved than the Z-Wave one. You have a quick manual with warranty terms. It just kind of gives you all the small print with some detailed information about how it works. You have a little insert here that just talks about some of their additional HomeKit devices you can get for your network. And then you have a quick start guide here that gives you a little bit more basic details, a quicker walkthrough for getting the device added to your network and getting started. The Apple HomeKit version of the flood sensor is literally identical to the Z-Wave sensor. They're the exact same size, exact same size or design at the bottom of the uh, sensor. You have the three metal prongs. And when you pop them open, they have the exact same battery inside as well. Same thing with the plastic tab. You'll want to remove that before using it. So it's really simple and it's user friendly. It shouldn't be too hard adding this to your network. It's, it's just like adding any other uh, Z-Wave or HomeKit item to your network and pairing it and uh, and then just setting up scenes. What do you want it to do when it goes off? Do you want it to just be a simple notification to your phone or do you have that water valve, that uh, smart water valve that this can communicate with and tell to turn off or shut off uh, if that time, God forbid, were to ever come that a leak would be detected. So. Again, they're really simple. You got the Z-Wave version, you have the HomeKit version. The HomeKit version is both the 
flood sensor and a temperature sensor, giving you a few extra little options in your network to set up for scenes. Both of these are available now, I believe. The home kit is a brand new one that just came out from Fibaro. The Z-Wave one's been out for a while. We'll have more information about this on the website at plcnetwork.net, where we'll give you a full review of what we feel, what we think about it, what we like or don't like, and uh, along with some pictures and links and all that fun stuff. And if you liked what you've seen here, don't forget to subscribe using that subscription button down there, as well as uh, interact with the comment section below where you can talk to us or each other about what you feel about the product. As always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.